Razorbacks. I'm your host, Marty Filigamo, and Friday night the Razorbacks took on the El Dorado Wildcats at Razorback Stadium, and the final score was El Dorado 28, Arkansas High 12. And Bill, I know you're disappointed because this was for the conference championship and a, a game that you've been pointing to all season, and it just looked like El Dorado came to play and, and did a good job. Marty, it, it is a disappointing loss. You certainly want to win your conference championship when you have a chance for it, and we certainly did last night. El Dorado did come to play. They are an exceptional, fine football team right now, and their motor was running well last night, and they deserve to win the way they play. The Razorbacks put out a tremendous effort. It just wasn't enough. They weren't able to to do the third and fourth down plays that it take to, to keep the drive going. And uh, as it resulted, El Dorado was able to turn over their third and fourth downs and make a first down. And I think that was the ball game. Marty, I agree with you. When you can take third downs and, and one, third down and five, third down and eight, fourth down and uh, one, fourth down and six and seven, and, and, and make first downs on all of them, uh, you're going to be hard to beat, and especially if you're as big and strong and powerful as El Dorado is. I know you were telling me last week that you felt like El Dorado had a quality football team, and I think that proved to be right last night because I think they were a very good football team. They're a, <clears throat> they're a different football team than they've been in, in the past. They went into this ball game with a lot of momentum that they had gained. They had been winning ball games and ball games. They had won close ball games early, and they got started, and they started blowing people away. And I don't think very many people realized how good a football team and how much talent El Dorado really has. Well, I think they did start off rather slowly. I think they lost to Camden, which is in a lower classification. Of course, they beat some good teams, too. But El Dorado seemed to have a good balanced attack. They ran the ball well. They passed when they had to. And they kept from making very many mistakes, which uh, turned out to be a big plus for them. Well. <clears throat> when their tailback Carlos Gatson got back well and he only started playing in the fifth ball game, then their football team changed because he's quite a player. Did they do anything that really surprised you as far as their offense or defense was concerned? Marty, I can't remember a thing in the ball game that El Dorado did except they did it without flaw. And of course, that, uh, sometimes that could be the big plus and as it turned out, uh, they were a quality football team, and, and they did the things they had to do to win the ball game. They really did. We're going to look at the highlights of the first half where the Razorbacks take the opening kickoff and drive for a touchdown because they knew it was going to be a good, good ball game in turn, and we start rather deep in our territory. Marty, the first play we run is a trap counter, and we make about five yards with it with our tailback John Caldwell, and then Mark Bleed splits on the what we call a 230 trap for about five or six, and we come back with a trap counter again, John Caldwell for about five or six, and we're moving the football at the pace now that it takes to be successful. We run a trap option and turn the ball up, and they make a big hit on Clinton, but Clinton last night broke some tackles and made some big plays for us. We got, uh, Mark Mead got stumbled uh, there as he hit the linebackers on that play. And then here's another good play by Clinton. I tell you what, Clinton looked good last night. He, he looked hard at the receivers. If they weren't there, he turned the ball up and made some things happen. There you can tell the, the, the intensity in which El Dorado's defense was playing. El Dorado plays a multiple defense as we go back to the action, and this is a fine reception and run by Alfred Jones. And Alfred is, is just getting better and better. Uh, he made two or three decisions on his cuts last night, caught the football, and uh, accelerated and did a good job for us. He made a lot of yards out of something that really wasn't there. That's right. Now we're down close to the goal line where the toughing that gets tough right here. Go to a goal line offense, and the first play we run, uh, we try to run behind the big elephant, and we make only a yard or so, and we're starting to about the seven-yard line. We try an outside option, play-action pass, and we were held as coming off the line of scrimmage, and that makes a penalty there, so we get another shot, and this time John Caldwell is going to take the football behind the unbalanced left side of our line, and a fine block there by 
Big Vincent Gamble and left side of the line, we go into the end zone as John dives over the top. Extra point after the first series of plays for Arkansas High. Chip Lott is the holder and Robert Reed snaps and we miss it to the left just a little bit. But you had to feel good at this time that we were able to take the ball all the way on the kickoff. Well, I, I feel, felt like before the ball game and, and more so during the ball game as it went on that we had to be successful at uh, moving the football and try hard to keep their offense off the football field. This is in the second quarter with Eldorado on with the ball. And, and you can see their full back there, Steve Gentle, a two-year starter, a 200-pounder. Uh, he's about 5'9 or 10 and, and built very powerful and strong, breaks tackles. Uh, there's a big play there on a second down and long, and they make it uh, a short yardage situation. Third down and a yard. They run an option on the outside, make a big play, get three key blocks and accelerate, turn the football down the sideline, and score. That was Terry Davis, 64-yard run on a third and one. Bobble yeah. snap. Yeah. And this this it, is no good, so it's that's, six to six. And that's it's, right. It's very important right now. The ball game, both offensive, have, have proved at this point that it's going to be pretty wide open as far as moving the football is concerned. Steve Gentle on a trap play over their left side and defensively over there, Tom West, Tommy Howard, and Arthur McElroy make the stop. They can go back to the big tailback that they're going to dial his number often during the night, Carlos Gatson, and he's going to be a thorn in our side. He and Gentle are powerful backs and also the Gatson youngster, the tailback, has blazing speed. And there's a quarterback sneak to pick up a very important first down just about at midfield. You know, defensively, Marty, we played extremely hard, but we were unable or unfortunate to stop them on third and one, third and five, fourth and six, and things like that. And the effort was still there for four quarters. But our uh, folks and we played multiple defenses. We played some eight-man fronts, and and as you can see there, they're just bulldozing right on through for threes, fours, and fives. It was a nice pass. Nice action pass, and they pick up Rodney McGee on the pass as he goes by our cornerback for the touchdown. This, this shocked me when they, and they've got a fine kicker too, but they lined up and went for two. We hit him back in the backfield twice and he is powerful enough to get in the end zone for the two-point conversion. And then they're up by eight. Which makes a big difference. It, it really does. And we, but as, you, as you're going to see before the uh, half ends, now we're going to pick the ball up here on the 20-something yard line, and we're going to have just three minutes to carry it the length of the field. And we're going to carry it down there. So I think that's going to show you that offensively, uh, you know, we're playing pretty well. We're hitting on some good cylinders, I guess you'd say, and, and moving the football. We gave them multiple formations. We tried to pin their defense to where we wanted them and uh, tried to, you know, pretty well guess with them to where we could expect whether or not they were going to run a 6-2 or a split four or their 40 defense or you know, the d many different defensive schemes. That was a good catch for first down by Jay Brewer. Jay caught that one for a first down. We come back with a flanker quick, and there's another good play. Alfred breaks two and turns it up, gets the ball out of bounds. Just a great effort. John Caldwell sliding outside, trying to turn the corner. He couldn't go off tackle as we intended, and... Uh, Drop the ball there and lose yardage on flanker quick that was open. Uh, El Dorado is going to jump off sides. We're in a throwing formation primarily. Clinton sets up, and then after that, he turns and runs strongly just inside the 10-yard line. Play action, wide open, 
just miss it. It's just misconnect. And that was pretty close to the last play in the half. And as, a, as it turned out, the Razorbacks were not able to score. <clears throat> 14 to 6. You're going into the dressing room, and I know you're disappointed. I know your team is disappointed. What are you thinking about right now that you, you had to do? <clears throat> Marty, in reviewing the first half, offensively, whoever had the football was going to be successful. The big keys were what the defensive teams were going to be able to do. I think we had to stop some third down situations for them, hopefully get some turnovers. Offensively, we couldn't make mistakes. And as well as they were playing, we were going to have to play well. Well, we're going to look at the second half, which uh, proved to be the turning point for El Dorado. But first, we have these messages. William King gets a good kick. They feel the football around the three-yard line. And uh, Chip Lott and Fred Horton make the tackle after the ball's moved up to approximately the 30-yard line. They begin with big tailback Gatson. He carries for about two yards, second down and eight. Trap play with Gentle, third down and eight. Another big key situation here, third down and eight to go. Option, pitch, tailback turns it, sprints outside of us, cuts inside of us, makes a big key first down. Those things are very important, and on third down, particularly long yardage, and they were successful. There's another good play for them. <clears throat> That's, Marty, when you take the ability that Gatson had, that was a power play inside. He couldn't go inside. He slid the ball outside. But then he, he can accelerate and turn the corner and could outrun our folks out there. See, we stopped the power there, and uh, defensively they come with a third down and about seven. I believe that's, and then they run the draw. No good. Big key down here. Play action pass. He releases just as he was hit. Hits the fullback, Steve Gentle, out of the backfield. First down. You have to respect their passing because uh, it, it worked so well last night. It complemented their running game excellently. Marty, you know, when they fumbled the ball, they got it. On third downs, they hit passes. They ran the outside option. Uh, they ran the power inside on certain downs for first down uh, after, on short yardage situation. And they played exceptionally well last night. I doubt very seriously and that, that you can play a football game and have any more good things happen to you than what happened to El Dorado last night. There's a big score right here for them. <clears throat> and we were hollering from the sideline. Coach Hollingsworth on the phones over there was hollering, draw, 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 and they did a super job with it. The delay of game after the extra point, and he kicks a short field goal, 21 to 6. And we pick up action with El Dorado on the ball deep in our territory again, and, and the Razorbacks are still playing hard, and they're still gang tackling, but it just wasn't enough. Marty, we had the football three downs in the third quarter. We had a third down and one at about our 40-yard line, threw a pass for a 20-yard gain, we just dropped the football. Uh, that was, you know, a big thing in the ball game, the way the ball game went. We would drop our uh, pass, maybe, and they would catch theirs. Uh, pull back inside, second down and eight. And, you know, they have big, strong running backs, but they, they also have a 227-pound average line up front that, that block pretty good. As you can see, they come off the football, and they were, they were just an exceptional football team last night. Big Carlos Gatson breaking tackles, play action, fine reception there, and, and that's a six foot two inch, 230 pound sophomore tight end. That's good execution <clears throat> by the quarterback. It really was. Uh, I thought John Tuberville played a fine ball game last night. He hit, he probably had one of his best football games last night. The Elder Raider didn't throw the ball very many times, but when they did, they were successful throwing it. As we turn in the fourth quarter, and the Elder Raider's on the move. The 
And there was a fumble, and we couldn't get it. That's right. They already got the football. And that fumble took place where, you know, you your chances of getting that, that fumble where it took place are pretty good. But when the ball bounces to one side or another, it makes a big key. Wide open receiver, and he picks up a good first down deep in our territory. Well, you know, as big a line as, as they have, and they come off the ball pretty good, and then you put 200 and 225 pounds in the backfield that are physical people that can that can run with speed and break tackles, it's going to be hard for any type of defensive team to slow them down. And then they pass this time. We do a good job of hitting them on the first down. They throw the fullback out of the backfield and are successful. And he just bulls his way. Bulls his way in the end zone. Our our folks come up and take him on. Chip Lott came up and slapped leather with him. Uh, tough there. But there's a difference between 215 pounds and, you know, 165 pounds. We're 22 points down with nine minutes to play, and it's there's no question the Razorbacks must generate some offense at this time. That's, that's right. If we're going to have a chance in a football game, things are going to have to happen pretty quick. Uh, we're going to throw one and just can't quite hold on to it there. It's a little bit behind us. Then Clinton's going to make a big play right here. He's going to dodge two right there. He's going to break a hand tackle there, uh, break a tackle on his foot there, and then their speed is going to catch him somewhere around their 10-yard line. Big run, 60-something yards. We pick it up again. He just ran out of gas, but it was still a big play, and we needed a big play at that time. Well, I'll tell you what, Clinton was running uh, hard. The other youngster was running hard. It was just a little bit difference in the speed. And, of course, carrying the football may make a little difference, too. So that's we take the ball in on the goal line offense. John Caldwell over the left side and then drives his way into the end zone. We're down... Uh, Right now, 28 to 12, try to kick the extra point. And then the plays that, that followed this, Marty, uh, we tried an onside kick, they got the football. Yeah, but we almost got it. They, they bobbled it, it was just a battle, and they just happened to win the battle. Well, that's the way on that fumble back in their backfield that they get that we were close to, and that's, those things happen. And unfortunately, last night they happened for the Razorbacks. Well, I don't like to make predictions, but I predict that if El Dorado continues to play as they played last night, they're going to be successful in the playoffs. <laughs> Marty, I, we had scouts here from about four different high schools last night uh, wondering, you know, who was going to play who, I guess you'd say, and uh, they told us there were about ten of them in our coach's office last night making calls and finding out about the playoffs. And, they just shook their heads when they looked and saw what they did out of El Dorado last night. They could not believe that, that, that there was that kind of football team in Arkansas. They said there's, there's no football team that they've seen that's, that can play as well and has as much talent as El Dorado has. Well, probably El Dorado started slowly, and a lot of people thought after they lost to Camden that they really weren't that good a ball club. But, and uh, they've come slowly, and I think they've matured as a football team, and they're going to be heard from down the road. Marty, another thing too that is I think a big key to El Dorado's football team is the same group that they lined up against us in the Jamboree in August is the same group they're lined up on Friday nights now and that makes a lot of difference. If you're totally well and you've had 10 or 11 ball games to get under your belt then you no longer become sophomores and juniors if you're young. That's right. You've got 10 or 11 games under your belt so you become a full-time varsity player and we certainly want to wish them well in the playoffs. We have some very special guests this morning. Well, uh, it's not much you can say about the Wildcats when they, you know, score 28 points on you. And, and uh, earlier in the season, there hadn't been a team that scored that many points on us at all. In fact, it's been only the top points been 14. Uh, El Rady came in here with a good ball club, good uh, game plan, and and uh, just, you know, ran over us. Uh, it's something that uh, we feel ba bad about, and uh, I think that our, you know, our biggest job right now is to get our heads up and 
you're ready for the playoffs, and I think we've got those type of kids with that can do that. A high school football with highlights of this week's game. Arkansas High Football has been brought to you